Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to talk about the diaphragm as you see here. The diaphragm separates the thoracical part and the abdominal part and it consists of two parts. All right, the white part as you, as you see here, the white part is the tendon central part and the red one is the muscular part. So if we go ahead and look at the origin and insertion point in this, you will notice that you will see that the diaphragm sits on the surrounding areas right here as you see you can try to draw it for you uh, in black it originates from the coastal part the lumbar part goes back to the coastal part and the sternum and it inserts at the tendinous uh, central parts of the muscle fibers how do they go originate and insert at the tendinous part it goes like that and what it does is that when they contract they pull the central part down increasing the volume and decreasing the pressure so that air can come in so they work as inspiration muscles so if you look more closely at the origin points as I said origin is it has three origin parts the lumbar coastal and sternal part so if we go ahead and look at the lumbar part, if we zoom in on that, you will notice that there are two uh, muscle fibers right here. These are called crews, so that's your uh, right crews and left crews. And you also notice that the left crews is shorter than the right crews, and it normally originates from lumbar L1, L2, L3, or L4, depending on person to person. The right and left screws normally have uh, two tendinous ligaments called the medial and lateral arcuate lines. Let's go ahead and see if I can try to highlight them. There we go. This is the medial arcuate line and this is the lateral arcuate line. The medial arcuate line normally passes above the psoas major, musculus psoas major. As you see here, I've, I've, uh, I've made it visible in this uh, picture and the medial arcuate line typically originate from the body of L2 and insert at the transverse process of the L1 so if we see if we can highlight it here this is the medial arcuate line and this is the lateral arcuate line right all right, so the medial arcuate line from the, the body of the L2 and it goes up and sits at the transverse process of the L1 while the lateral arcuate line sits on the transverse process of L1 and insert at the tip of the 12th rib. And if the lateral arcuate line uh, passes above the um, the mus quadratus lumborum, musculus quadratus lumborum. Uh, also made it visible on the other side. Let's see if we click on it. This one. Uh, this is the quadratus lumborum, right? Um, so that is the lumbar part. Now, if we go over to the coastal part, the coastal part is here, as mentioned earlier and the coastal part originates from the cartilage the coastal cartridge from the 7 to the 12 uh, ribs so if this is 12 this is 12 11 this is 10 9 8 and 7 all right so from here all the way down to here and you'll see that if the cartilage is a 7 goes like this and it follows the line of the the uh, diaphragm so that's how it originated the coastal part and now we go over to the sternal part the sternal part is right about right about here and the if we go actually go ahead and zoom in on that let's see if we can get a better picture let's see right here it originated from the posterior uh, surface of the 
um, of the xiphoid process of the sternum and it goes all the way back to the uh, inserts at the central tendons part all right so that is the origin insertion pattern part and feet if you look at this view there are three main openings on the diaphragm you have the aortic hiatus that is located right about here the aortic hiatus is between the two grooves let's go let's see if we can um, visualize it even more by adding the aorta there we go here you see the aorta passing through the aortic hiatus and the aortic hiatus has is actually supported by another ligament right here this is the median the median arcuate ligament all right the median arcuate ligament let's see if we can click on that this is the median arcuate ligament and don't get it get confused by uh, this one this is the medial arcuate ligament this is the median all right and also it supports it and protects it the aorta all right so now this is one of the openings the next one is the um, vena cable foramen it's going to be up here and if we go ahead and add the uh, main vein right here you see this is another uh, opening and the third opening we have the third big opening is going to be here and this is going to be the esophageal hiatus so if we go ahead and search on esophagus esophagus you will see it here here you see the esophagus uh, passing through the uh, the esophagus hiatus of the uh, diaphragm now, if you, one more thing I want, uh, the, another thing I want to talk about is the, uh, is some triangles. There are uh, some triangles located on the, in the diaphragm. We have the sternocostal triangle. Let's see if I can open that here. See, the first one I want to talk about is the sternocostal triangle. So if we zoom in here. This is one triangle I want to talk about. This right here, and this triangle uh, is important because it, uh, the let's see, the superior epigastric vein and artery pass here. So the here you see the superior epigastric vein and superior superior epigastric uh, artery pass here. Right, so this is this is called the this is called the sternocostal triangle. Right, so the sternocostal triangle. All right, so it's important. And the next triangle I want to talk about is located actually back here. See if I can get a good picture. It's located here, and this triangle is called lumbocostal triangle because you have a lumbar uh, bone, uh, lumbar part here, and uh, right here, lumbar part, and a uh, rib right here. So lumbocostal triangle, and this triangle has some clinical significance, important. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video is the upper and lower surface of the diaphragm. If you look at this diagram right here, look at this diagram. Let's go ahead and see if I can get a good picture. On the, the upper surface of the diaphragm is covered by the endothoracic fascia. So the endothoracic fascia actually goes from here down like this and over the the uh, uh, diaphragm all right same on the other side like this and up right here um, 
And another thing you discovered by is the pleura. The pleura, I'm just going to change the color so that it doesn't get confused, it's confusing. The pleura, as you see here, is that, and don't, don't get confused, this is not the lungs. The pleura actually protects the lungs. So the whole thing here is the pleura. Right? And the lower part of the pleura, let's go ahead and make it orange, the lower part of the pleura is called the, the dia. Magnetic pleura. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to black. So again, there are two things that uh, make up the upper surface of the diagram: the endothoracic fascia and the thoracic fascia and the diaphragmatic pleura. All right, in the middle here. You're gonna have what's called the medio sternum when the heart is. So, okay, and the lower part, the lower part of the uh, diaphragm is gonna consist of the endo, the endo uh, abdominal fascia, endo abdominal fascia. And also something else called the, let's go ahead and make it green maybe. Another thing is called the uh, peritoneum. Peritoneum is going to be more around here, maybe. All right. The peritoneum is, uh, just covers the abdominal part. All right. And this is the end of this video and I hope this was helpful.